Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, proud to come on now the podcast, where we talk facts over feelings. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. I got another rant for you today. I'm on a roll right now, and I'm pumping this out one by one, because I got a lot of stuff to go over as I was off the last couple of days. Let's talk about this one. But before we jump on in, thank you for your continued support of this channel. We greatly appreciate you. Be sure to pound that like button, subscribe. Ring that bell, share this video, let the world know that we are here as we are trying to get up. We are trying to get to that 7,000 subscriber mark. It seems like it's flatlined a little bit. I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah, man, help us get there. We appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Become a member of this channel. Let's talk about what's popping off in the, in, in women's college basketball right now. And it's it's something that's been continuing to happen, and I'm getting, I'm listening to this over and over and over and over again. And, and I'm just and it's tired and it's old. And it's gotten old real fast. There is only one Caitlin Clark. There's only, let me repeat that. There's only one Caitlin Clark. And this video is actually popping off because a couple of weeks back, Ben Daniel and I did a podcast where we're talking about talent and, and all that. And I, and I, and I referred to Caitlin Clark and I said, she is the only, she is a generational talent. She's generational which is why next year or this year, there can't be another one who's generational because generational means it only happens once typically in a generation or in the, in the terms of basketball in 20, 25 years. The fact that we had Kobe Bryant and LeBron James in a eight, seven, eight year period <clears throat> is one of those times where you say, eh, Maybe there, maybe that we had two of them in, in in a similar in a similar time. Like for example, LeBron's LeBron James is generational. I'm a huge I'm a I was a huge I was a huge Dwayne Wade fan as a as a member of the Miami Heat. Dwayne Wade is not a generational player. We've seen players like him. He might be a top three shooting guard of all time, but we've seen guys that we could compare to Dwayne Wade. There's no comparison to LeBron. There's only one comparison to Kobe. And that's Michael Jordan. There's no comparison to Michael Jordan because Kobe can't compare it to Michael Jordan. There's no comparison to Shaq. There's no comparison to Magic. There's no comparison to Larry Bird. That was one of the rare times where you had two guys who were so great come at the same time, which was Magic and Bird. <clears throat> but that doesn't exist here. Kalen Clark is a generational talent. And Ben and I talked about that. He did a video on this as well. So thank you for reminding me about this, Ben, because I did taking your idea, bro. I got I got to do it. I, I got to talk about it as well. And I know you posted he posted some stuff about uh, Ken Swift on, on Twitter, who posted some stuff about you're not going to hit, pin, you know, hit pin me against uh, Caitlin against Paige. I like them both. I think Paige is a generational talent, blah, 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 blah. And I do follow him on, on Twitter as well. No, she's not. I, 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 no, she's not. I totally disagree. And I'm not asking you to dislike Paige Beckers. I don't dislike Paige Beckers. I don't dislike Juju Watkins. I don't dislike any player in college basketball. In fact, I don't largely dislike any of the WNBA players for the most part. There's a few that I that are not my cup of tea. I don't. I'm not a fan of DJ Carrington. I'm not a fan of Asia Wilson. I'm not a fan of Kelsey Plum. I'm not a fan of anyone that was taking digs at Caitlin Clark. I, I just, I, I just don't, I don't get down like that because it doesn't make sense to me why they did it. I know why, but it doesn't make sense why they, they, they like they, they cut their nose to spite their face, cost themselves money, just silliness, silly silliness. But looking at the situation from a, a wider lens. I'm, I'm reading posts about Paige it was nine of 10 against South Florida for 22 points, three rebounds, two steals, one assist. And people are sitting here going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then there's re the reactions to some people are saying, well, she ain't Caitlin. Yeah, I know that. And then there's others that say, well, she doesn't play point guard. Yeah, that's right. She doesn't play point guard. You're right. Even though last year, she kind of played point guard. She did. She absolutely did. The ball would be in her hands when the game was on the line. 
because she was their best player. The ball would be in her hands when she was when the game was on the line. Nico Mule may have had led the team in assists. Nico Mule may have been the actual point guard. But Paige had the ball when the time mattered. At the same time, Paige does not create for her teammates. Paige is shoot first, pass second. Paige averaged almost 22 points a game. She's very efficient, absolutely very efficient. 53% from the field last year, 41.6 from three. Very, very good basketball player. But we've seen it plenty of them before. There's nothing about, and someone may disagree with me and say, well, she wasn't a point guard. That's like saying LeBron's not the point guard. On most teams, the best player, if they're a wing, they kind of become the point guard when the game matters. When everything's the when everything is on the line, the best player becomes the point guard, presuming that's a wing. It's a whether it's a point, shooting guard, or a small forward, the ball's in their hands. <clears throat> Paige had a 22-point game with one assist. What exactly does Paige Beckers do that you would say is exceptional? The answer is nothing. What does Caitlin Clark do that's exceptional? Pass. Her passing ability is exceptional. And while she her shooting range is exceptional, Her ability to create for teammates is exceptional. These things she does at an elite level. And I'll also say her ability to rebound as a guard is very, very, very good. <clears throat> and she did all this playing with above average to good players. She did not do this playing next to 10 McDonald's All-Americans. She did not do this playing next to multiple national players of the year. She did this playing along the side of players like Kate Martin, who's a good player. A falter, a good player. Gabby Marshall, a decent player. Stulky, a, a, a good player. None of those players are going to be our, our top, our first round picks. None of them. Paige is playing probably side by side with at least five future first round picks. <clears throat> so when people jump up and down and say, oh, she had 22 points on nine and 10 shooting, well, who the hell was the girl that just had, was nine of nine for Iowa the other day? Forgot which it was the big it was the big girl. What's her damn name again? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I apologize. I will never be an expert at women's basketball when it comes to names. Why do I not remember her name? Where the heck is it? Iowa. Uh, uh, roster. Addison O'Grady. Addison O'Grady was nine of nine. In their win against Virginia Tech. Addison O'Grady is averaging 15 a game right now with wins over Virginia Tech and Northern Illinois. She was nine of nine in that win. 18 points. Are we gonna go put her on the level of Caitlin Clark now? No. Uh, so if she's, I mean, don't use uh, an outlier game of going nine of ten and sit here and say, oh. She's the best player in America. Don't compare her to Caitlin Clark. Don't dare call her generational when that term in itself means it's very, it's like once in a generation. It's what happens once over a period of time. If she was generational, you'd see a whole lot more than 22 points and one assist. She'd be averaging close to 30. She would have things, she would do things that would make you buy tickets. At this point in time, is there anything that makes you buy a ticket to go see Paige Becker's play? No. 
But people will sell organs to go see Caitlin Clark play. Caitlin Clark's merchandise sells off the shelves in seconds. Her jerseys sell out in seconds. Her basketball sells out in seconds. Everything she does sells out in seconds. That's generational. And that's not even on stuff that's on the court. That's everything around the court. Are you going to go buy a Paige jersey tomorrow because she plays at UConn right now? No. Are people going to watch UConn play because she's on the court? In fact, let's go look at this for one quick second. And I have, and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm curious about it. <clears throat> Although it's probably not available, nor does anyone care. What the hell? Where, where, where they played? They played South Florida. First off, let's take a look at this. This game was at UConn. Uh, I'm checking one thing first. Okay, they sold out the building. That is a sellout. I just want to confirm that. It's a Band-Aid box, $10,299. They play in a small building. They sold the game out. Hmm? Okay. The game before that, they played Boston. They beat the brakes off of them. That game was being played... In Hartford, they did not sell that building out. I can, I'm looking at a, a video right now with the entire back upper deck is empty. Caitlin Clark didn't have empty buildings, man, last year. There were no empty buildings. You never had sections of – like, I'm looking at a photo right now where you can literally drop a mattress. Heck, I'll share it with you so you see what I'm talking about. You think I'm crazy? I am not crazy. You see that right there? You see that right there? Right up in there? Back right behind there? That is, those are empty seats. That is sections of empty seats. There are tons of empty seats in this building. Tons. She's not filling the building. People aren't buying tickets. Let me find, let me, let me find something else for you. Let's take a look at something else real quick. I'm sorry. I was looking to see if I could find TV ratings for this game. I cannot find TV ratings for this game. I don't even know if the game was on TV. I'm sure it was, but I can't even find television ratings for it. The reason I was looking for TV ratings is just, just to make a comparison. What, 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 are, what are her games doing in ratings? What are her games doing in ratings? I, I, I don't know. I know they're not doing Caitlin numbers. That's part of being generational. People want to watch you play. I, it's very, very simple. It's a simple, simple thing. So while Paige Beckers might be a very good to great player, she's not an elite. She's not an exceptional level player. She's not elite. She's not on the Caitlin level. She does not make you buy tickets. She does not make you buy merch. Outside of her geographic area, which is Connecticut, People aren't going to go buy her jersey. Nobody cares. And I'm not trying to dismiss it. I'm just trying to get to this. I'm trying to get, get people to get past this thing of everything that someone does comparing her to Caitlin Clark. Stop doing it. It's just not right. I'm not comparing her because I know what it is. But some of y'all folks will jump on here and call someone a generational player when that's just not what she is. Some of y'all will say she's just as good. She's not. She's just not. And, and until you let go of that, we're going to keep having people say every time Juju Watkins plays a game, we're going to say, oh, my God, Juju did this. She's the next Caitlin. No, she's not. She's not the next Caitlin Clark. And Paige, who's now in her fifth year and 23 years old, should be owning college basketball players. But I don't even think she's the best player in the country this year. As I said, I think Flage Johnson's gonna have a major claim to that thing. But I'm looking forward to see what the ratings are of that USC UConn game when that thing pops. We will see. We'll get a better idea to see what they draw. Because remember this: Caitlin was drawing a million people to watch games in February, January. She filled a, put fifty-five thousand. In an exhibition game in a, in a stadium, like, 
there there are things that are transcendent of the game. Like she she's I don't want to say she's bigger than the game, but Caitlin Clark is bigger than the game. She's bigger than the WNBA. She's on the level of Michael Jordan right now. Tiger Woods. Like this is this is next level stuff. She's LeBron James. Her marketing ability is through the roof. Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Kylian Mbappe. She's the number fourth ranked most marketable basket, most marketable athlete in the world. In the world. Like this is not normal. I'm looking at the list right now, and I'm actually shocked because I didn't look past the top five. Paige is number 16, which I think is absolutely asinine. Coco Goff is 13. Sunisa Lee is 15. She's a tennis player. Katie Ledecky is a swimmer. Number 10. No one cares about swimming outside of Olympic years. So that's that's nonsense. I have no idea who Ilona Mayer is. She looks like she's a rugby player. She's she's yoked. Rebecca Andrade is, at a, is a gymnast out of Brazil. Simone Biles, number one. She's obviously the greatest gymnast in the history of the sport. You know, LeBron's three, Messi's five, Mbappe seven, Ronaldo nine, Travis Kelsey 12, Lewis Hamilton 11, Noah Lyles 14, Neymar. You're not going to tell me that Neymar is less marketable than Paige Becker. Stop it. And you're not going to tell me that, that Asia Wilson is number 25. That's absolutely preposterous. Kelsey Plum 22, Brianna Stewart 21. I, I mean, gosh, we're, we're really they're they're reaching now. That's a little bit of a reach here, but Caitlin Clark's numbers across the board. She sells more merch than anybody. She sells out merch. She sells out buildings. She puts ridiculous ratings on the screen every single day, every single game she plays. Stop making these comparisons. It's unfair to Paige Beckers, and I'm not doing it because I know she's not. But when people make statements like she's generational, man, you don't know what. I mean, I I appreciate Ken Swift and what he says on on Twitter, but I don't agree with that at all, at all. Like there's nothing that Paige does that is even, is there anything that Paige does that's even better than Caitlin Clark? She doesn't score at a higher rate. She doesn't shoot better. She doesn't pass better. She doesn't rebound better. She doesn't shoot for the free throw line better. She's not being guarded 94 feet. So what does she do that's better? to make her generational. She does nothing better. She's not better. She's in fact, she's, Caitlin's here. Every other women's basketball player is down here. It's not close. Stop comparing the, stop comparing anyone to a transcendent athlete. And here's the scary part. We haven't seen year two yet. Caitlin Clark will be a 25, and 11, 25, and 12 player next season. Points and assists. She's going to be the league MVP next season. Mark it down. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you not? I'd love to hear what you got to say. Be sure to like that. Like this video. Pound that like button. Subscribe. Ring that bell. Go on over to Rudy's Rant. Subscribe over there too. Become a member here. Greatly appreciate you. This is Rudy's Rant. Facts of our feelings. Come on now.